Hello, Dr. Choi and classmates. This is Vincent Choi. I am going to give you a video of swan neck deformity. Swan neck deformity is a disorder that causes multiple joints in fingers to bend in unusual positions. The causes of the disorder include inflammatory joint disease, mainly rheumatoid arthritis, and injury to the hand. There is also a genetic cause such as hypermobility syndrome, Ehlers Danlos syndrome, and Martin's disease. The unusual bending of the fingers can cause a functional impairment. Here, I'm going to describe the anatomy of fingers and show you how this relates to swan neck deformity. I'm going to show you the bones in our hands. For easy illustration, I will use a right hand as an example. At the base of the hand, you will find a total of eight small and irregular bones, and these are called carpal bones. As we move along, you will find a total of five bones. One, two, three, four, five, and these are called metacarpal bones. And each finger has one metacarpal bone. Towards the tip, of the hand, you will find a set of bones called phalanges. At the front, there are two phalanges, the distal and proximal phalanges. For the index, middle, ring, and little fingers, each of them have three phalanges. The distal phalange, middle phalange, and proximal phalanges. Now, I want you to pay attention to two types of finger joints. Proximal interphalangeal joints, in short, PIP joint, and distal interphalangeal joint, DIP joint. And they relate to swan neck deformity. Bear in mind, these two joints are only available in index, middle, ring, and little fingers. Swan neck deformity is caused by impairment of extensor mechanism of the PIP joint, like here. So this causes the hyperextension of the PIP joint. And you can see the hyperextension of PIP joint in the uh, little finger like here. This combines with flexion of PIP joint like here. So we can see that the middle phalange between PIP and DIP joints look like a swan neck. As I said earlier, these two joints are not available in the thumb. So swan neck deformity does not occur at the thumb. At early stage, patients would have a pain and stiff sensation at PIP joint. Swelling of the joint could be observed too. If symptoms are left untreated, there would be a gradual difficulty in PIP joint flexion, and this would eventually lead to PIP hyperextension, causing the finger to resemble a swan's neck. Therefore, it is relatively easy to recognize the signs of Swan neck deformity at later stages. Nailbuff classification system is commonly used to assess stiffness level of PIP joint in swan neck deformity. It is classified from type 1 to type 4, where type 1 is the least severe and type 4 is the most severe. Type 1 is where PIP joints are flexible without functional loss. Type 2 and 3 indicate limited PIP joint flexion to different extents, whereas type 4 indicates stiffness of PIP joint. There are two ways to diagnose swan neck deformity. One is objective and the other one is subjective diagnosis. For objective diagnosis, doctors use X-ray and MRI to check finger joint conditions, examine joint alignment, and to see if bone fracture is present as in a traumatic finger injury. This all form as part of medical diagnosis. 
Physiotherapists can do the physical diagnosis by testing range of motion of PIP and DIP joints. In the early stages, there is some flexibility of PIP joints. To flex the PIP joints, physiotherapists help a patient to passively flex the PIP joints out of the hyperextension. Once the joint is no longer hyperextended, active flexion of the joint is still possible in the earlier stages. In the later stages, the PIP joint will become stiff and fixed, and this will not be passively correctable. Degenerative arthritis at the PIP joint may lead to further joint pain and loss of motion. For subjective diagnosis, patients would normally experience pain, swelling, and stiffness at those finger joints. The differential diagnosis of small neck deformity is hyperextension of PIP joints and flexion of DIP joints. Be careful that small neck deformity is commonly mistaken with another disorder called Boutonnier deformity in differential diagnosis. Boutonnier deformity is the opposite of small neck deformity, which consists of flexion of PIP joint and hyperextension of DIP joint. I'm going to introduce a test called bundle litter test, or in short, bundle test. This is used to test the range of motion of PIP joints at early stages of swan neck deformity patients. To start, we hold the metacarpal phalangeal joint, which is here. In short, we call this the MCP joint. We hold this in an extended position while doing the passive flexion of PIP joint. And now we look at the range of motion of the PIP joint. Then, this time we flex the MCP joint and then flex the PIP joint again. And now we check the range of motion of the PIP joint. The objective of the test is to see if there is a difference in the range of motion of PIP joints. If there is no change in the range of motion, then we could say that there is a capsular restriction of the PIP joint itself. However, if the PIP range of motion increases when the MCP joint is flexed, then we could say that there is a tightness of intrinsic hand muscles. Finally, the decrease in PIP range of motion would mean the tightness of extrinsic hand muscles. If swan neck deformity is less severe, physiotherapy would be recommended as the first line intervention. This can help to restore function and mobility of fingers. I am going to show you two simple finger exercises. The first one is a strengthening exercise. Now I assume my right index has a swan neck deformity. Put the left thumb on the palmar side of the middle phalange of the right index like here. Make sure the left thumb is pressing the right index to give resistance. This can be done by yourself or your physiotherapist. Now flex the PIP joint against the resistance of the thumb. And this can increase the strength of flexor digitorum muscle of the index finger. Finally, extend the PIP joint and repeat the exercise. The second one is a stretching exercise, and you can try to do this yourself. First, you have the finger extended. And again, I am using my right index finger as an example. Flex all the finger joints so that the nail touches the palm, and then extend back to the original position. You can repeat the exercise again. As a result, this will help you to improve the range of motion of the finger joints. If the case is more severe, then surgery would be recommended. In summary, swan neck deformity causes abnormal bending of fingers. It is caused by an injury, inflammatory disorders, or a genetic disease. Patients would experience pain and stiffness of finger joints. Therefore, it would be recommended to seek medical or physiotherapist for advice. This is the end of the video.
Thank you.